What it do? Bad time crew. Hey man, listen, today I'm here to talk about the best upcoming underdogs in the UFC. There is a lot of great cards coming up. We've got 298 UFC Mexico. We've got 299 as well, 300. We're going to ignore these, dude. Atlantic City, I'm looking forward to that. Vittori versus Allen, like I said, 300. A lot of great cards coming up over the next couple weeks, dude. And I had a look over a couple of these cards. And there are some underdogs on here that I think are pretty solid picks, in my opinion. Like, almost to the point where I looked at some of them and was like, bro, why is this guy the underdog? So I just want to go over a couple of those and make the case for them today. And I'm sure I'll talk about these matchups more when I do predictions for these cards. Make sure you stay tuned for my bedtime picks this week for the Amavov de Lidze card. It's a terrible card. I looked at the card. I said, what a terrible card this is. It's a very bad uh, Las Vegas Apex card, and we don't like that, but I digress. Let's move on, dude. Let's talk about the first couple of fights that I want to talk about. Starting off, this one got an audible reaction out of me, dog. Dan Ige, Andre Philly. I opened this. First of all, why is Andre Philly ranked? Cannot name a single person that he's fucking beat. Second of all, Dan Ige is the underdog against Andre Philly. Now, this is almost like pick em odds. I'm not saying this is like outrageous odds i can understand that andre philly's a pretty good fighter but dude you just look at the competition that they've beat and that they've lost to i don't understand why philly's ranked and i don't understand why he's the favorite against dan ige when he's coming in on short notice i just don't understand that whatsoever dan ige is probably going to use his grappling in this matchup as well honestly i can see a dan ige split decision or a dan ige decision win i really don't know why he's the underdog i would almost be it's weird, though, because if Philly was the underdog, I'd be like, you know what? He's actually a good pick, too. But because Dan Ige is the underdog, and I feel like he's going to win this fight, I think this is a bit dumb. Like, uh, people must not know that this is short notice. It was supposed to be Lerone Murphy, like, a couple weeks ago. So I don't really see why Andre Philly's the favorite. Maybe it's just the frame and the build, but in my opinion, Dan Ige should not be an underdog in this fight. He's actually pretty good. I know I always say that, and then he loses, but, dude... He, he, he deserves a bit better than that, bro. Come on, dude. Andre Philly, bro. I like Philly, but come on, dude. Let's move on. UFC 300. First one I want to talk about, Max Holloway. Now, listen, dude. I know I made a video talking about Max Holloway shouldn't be taking this fight. This is a dumb fight. I still stand by the idea that this is bad matchmaking. This is a dumb idea. You're canceling out the featherweight and the lightweight division's next best contender to make UFC 300 more stacked because Dana White booked himself into a corner. Do I think it's a bad card? No. Do I think this is a bad fight? No. It's an entertaining matchup. However, the odds are a bit insane. Max Holloway 2-1 to one underdog is pretty crazy when you consider that Justin Gaethje's weakness is straight punches. Max Holloway's chin is insane. His cardio is insane. He's got pretty seek, like sneaky good wrestling as well, especially good timed wrestling when he's losing on the feet. So I do think we'll see Max Holloway mixing some takedowns and some grappling. But dude, first and foremost, like I just said, Justin Gaethje's fucking weakness is straight punches. I can see Max Holloway jabbing to the body, coming up right, right hand, straight down the pipe, hurting Justin Gaethje. We've seen Justin Gaethje get rocked in basically every single fight. Even though he's looked good, he still is susceptible to that straight hand. Like, you saw Fizzy have hurt him with it. You saw Poirier wobble him pretty badly with a straight left. Michael Chandler hurt him really badly with a straight right hand as well. I think Max Holloway is a lot more accurate and better chin than all of those guys. Better cardio, better output. I do think Max Holloway's getting slept on a little bit. Now, let me be real with you, dog. I don't think he's going to win. But 2-1 to one odds is a bit insane. And I feel like you would be kind of dumb to not start to be like, ooh, I don't know, maybe Max Holloway wins this one. When you look at those odds, dude, like, why would you not throw a tenner on Max Holloway? He's fucking Max Holloway, bro. So that's the first one I, t I wanted to talk about. Second one, a little bit selfish, guys, but I had to talk about myself here. I don't know why I'm the underdog against Armin Sarukian, but... I do when I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand that Armin Sarukian looked really good against Benil Dariush, better than Charles Oliveira did. That's fair. But you look at Oliveira's career. How many times has he been the underdog and just absolutely smoked somebody? Like, when are we going to learn the fucking lesson, bro? I'm pretty sure he was the underdog against fucking Kevin Lee, bro. I'm, I'm praying not, but shout out to my boy K. Lee, man. But, dude, he was underdog against Poirier, underdog against Chandler, Underdog against Benil Dariush, and now he's underdog against Armin Sarukian. How many fucking times do we have to learn this lesson? I feel like we're going to see a Charles Oliveira KO or Armin Sarukian KO in round one. I think this is going to be a, a smoking either way. Like somebody's getting chinned either way. 
A lot of people are riding with Charles Oliveira, but the odds makers are riding with Armin Saruki. And so I feel like you are you have to kind of start looking at the Charles Oliveira upset because for him to be the former UFC champion, the second best lightweight ever behind Khabib, or arguably the best above Khabib, depending on um, where you rank him. Maybe Islam's above him because he beat him. Armin Sarukian and Islam Makhachev are two completely different styles. Like, if Armin was a straight wrestler and he was just ragdolling everybody and his striking looked as clean as Islam's, I'd be like, okay, yeah, this is good. This is good odds. You know, like, when Islam was the favorite against Charles, I knew Islam was going to win because Islam has sharp, good defense. You look at his stats, he doesn't get hit. He's really hard to hit. He has good power, good finishing instincts. Armin Sarukian, we've seen him get wobbled by lesser competition, dude. We've seen him get fucking tagged up by lesser guys, bro. We've seen him get out fucking wrestled by, you know, the GOAT, Gamer Army Nation, Mateus Gamera. So I do think that Charles Oliveira being almost a two-to-one underdog is kind of fucking insane, dude. So that's two that I really, really wanted to talk about, especially Charles Oliveira. Let me move on to UFC 298, where there's two others that I want to talk about. And maybe this is kind of controversial, but uh, oh, there's only one I want to talk about. I think Paulo Costa has a good chance to win this fight, dude. I don't know if I'm fucking crazy, but I feel like Paulo Costa actually might win this fight. I have this weird gut feeling. Now, this fight may be cancelled and this makes no sense, but... Dude, Paulo Costa is a big, strong middleweight, good physicality, underrated cardio, underrated wrestling as well. People really shit on him because of some of the controversies that he's had, but he's actually a pretty good fighter. Like, I feel like he has a good chance against most of these top guys. He completely outscrambled fucking Vittori. Nobody talks about that shit. I know he got outstruck by Vittori, but I feel like Vittori and Whitaker are two very different styles. And I feel like Whitaker is more kind of in and out, in and out, in and out. Please don't touch my chin. Mom Vittori is just mogging him, walking him down. And Paulo Costa is just brawling with him. It was a very competitive fight. It was a good fight. And I think that the shots that Vittori took from Costa, I don't think Whitaker can take them. I don't think Whitaker can take a flush head kick from Paulo Costa. I don't think he can take like a flush right hand from Paulo Costa up against the fence, like mixing up to the body as well. I can weirdly see Paulo Costa winning this fight. And I feel like I just have to express this gut feeling for when Paulo Costa's title run goes crazy. And I can be like, I fucking told you so. Now, listen, I'm Australian. I want Robert Whitaker to win. Him getting KO'd by Drickers 2 Plus, he killed my soul, dude. I lost years off my life seeing this man get KO'd by fucking DDP, dude. But it is what it is. All I want to say, Paulo Costa, underrated as fuck. Underrated as fuck. Good enough cardio to make it through three rounds with Robert Whitaker. It's not a high-paced fight. You're not going to be going pace for pace with Robert Whitaker. It's going to be a po- bit of a point fight kind of matchup. I think Paulo Costa, if he actually pressures and he goes to the body, he can win this fight. So he is a sneaky good underdog here. Maybe controversial as well. This is where people leave the video. Jeff Neal is going to lose to Ian Gary. But let's move on. UFC 299. These are the last two I want to talk about. There's some other fight night cards, but I just, you know, I haven't looked over a lot of those and I don't really care. I like to talk about those when I do the prediction videos. Dustin Poirier. I can't believe I'm about to say this, dude. Dustin Poirier is going to beat Benoit Saint-Denis, dude. I know that I'm the biggest Dustin hater on YouTube, but I don't understand why he's the underdog in this matchup. I do, but I don't. I know he got knocked out by Justin Gagey, but it's fucking Justin Gagey. And he got frustrated. He couldn't hit him. I made a whole video about this, dude. Benoit Saint-Denis does not move his head. He spams kicks. And he grapples, he pulls guillotine just like Poirier does. I really don't see Benoit Saint-Denis hitting Poirier with that head kick that he hit Frivola with. He literally held his shoulder and Frivola just ran out, ran out of range with his hands down. There's no way he's doing that shit to Poirier, dude. And the more I think about this matchup, the more I can see Poirier just chinning him with a right hook or a left hook and just sitting him down, following up big punches. I think Poirier is going to win this fight, dude. He's never lost two in a row. A lot of fighters that have a statistic like that, it stays true. Even Neil Magny. I know I'm comparing Poirier to Neil Magny right now. Let me cook. Neil Magny, I just found out the other day, has not lost two in a row in like years. And he lost before the Mallet fight. He won that fight. I think Poirier is going to keep his record intact. I think he's going to get this one done via KO. And I feel like a lot of people are going to cash in on that Poirier underdog line. You'll probably see fight week. The odds will be like near even. It'll be like DDP Strickland. Like he'll just balloon up to kind of like pick them odds. Because I feel like a lot of people are going to think about this for a long time and kind of go, you know what? Poirier might actually win this, dude. Last one I want to talk about, another pick em. JDM, Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is a slight favorite. I think this is a perfect matchup for JDM. I really think JDM, this is going to be easier for him than the Kevin Holland fight, stylistically. 
Kevin Owens so awkward and he has that touch of death power that I think JDM really, really was more cautious in that fight. But I still don't understand the controversy from that. I don't, it shouldn't have been a split decision. Kevin Holland didn't win that fight. He didn't touch JDM. He barely fucking touched him throughout three rounds. I swear to God, the UFC favors like power punches. Like if you have any sort of power, you do anything. Oh my God, he won the round. JDM beat Kevin Holland pretty clearly in my opinion. And I think he's going to outbox Gilbert Burns. He's got good enough defensive grappling when he doesn't pull fucking guillotines like he's prime Dustin Poirier to keep it standing long enough to out damage Gilbert Burns. And I think he's going to win a decision. I think he's going to, his jab is going to cause nightmares for Gilbert Burns. His head movement, he's going to make Gilbert, Gilbert Burns miss really badly because Gilbert Burns swings big overhands and spams calf kicks and then tries to run him over with a takedown. Those are the three things that JDM really has to prepare for. And I think he's going to be able to do it. So these are my thoughts on some upcoming underdogs. Some of the best underdog picks, in my opinion. These are the guys that I don't know if they should be an underdog, but because they are, I'm going to feel like a genius when I pick them. So let me know what you guys think of these fights down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there another fighter that's an underdog that you're like, bro, what the fuck are they doing? Let me know what you think in the comments, boys. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and go follow me on Instagram at bedtime. And may I'll do a face reveal on my story right now. See you in the next video, boys. Goodbye. I'm not actually doing a face reveal. I just lied, but goodbye.